Uh, my name's Raymond, and this is my 2019 Tacoma TRD Off-Road, and uh, I got it uh, in uh, 2019, and uh, bought it primarily to go off-roading, overlanding, and remote exploration. This is the uh, ARB uh, bumper uh, for the Tacoma. I got it primarily because it was uh, the strongest thing I could find on the market. Uh, I think it's uh, also one of the few legal bumpers on the market because of the little, these tiny crush can cans here. And uh, eventually I'm going to get some lights uh, at some point. And then in the center we have a, a worn winch. It's the uh, uh, Xeon Platinum 10S. Uh, it's got the, uh, it's got the wireless remote control. But the only downside is there's no free spool. So make sure you don't lose your remote. It's got the synthetic line. And I put this special uh, Crosby uh, hook on here. I just wanted something a little beefier than the uh, that crappy little hook that comes with the uh, stock with the, uh, the winch. And I got this little flip plate here. I didn't change any of the lights. Uh, the headlights are the same. The uh, fog lights are the same. I might replace the, the halogen lights in the bumper one day, the LEDs, but not a priority right now. But here we have the VHF antenna for calling your miles on the uh, FSRs. Don't want any uh, unintended accidents with the logging trucks. Here we have the uh, ham radio antenna. Uh, my installer chose this one. It's uh, tuned very finely for the ham frequencies. And uh, I chose not to put, uh, some people put a, uh, a Toyota, what they call the Toyota Heritage Grill. Mm -hmm. But I chose not to do that because it was a low priority for me. Mm -hmm. But it's a good thing I did because with the Toyota Heritage Grill, uh, with, the, with the stock grill, uh, you have the, uh, the sensors behind the, uh, the logo here. But with the, uh, the, the Toyota Heritage Grill, the garnish plate is down below and that won't work with the ARB bumper. So good fortune that the, uh, the sensors, I can still use the sensors for the crash avoidance and the emergency braking and the adaptive cruise control. So underneath you can't see, but there's a uh, full set of skid plates from RCI uh, protecting the uh, oil pan, the transmission and the transfer case. On top of the hood, we have the Cascadia 4x4 solar panel. Uh, this is a, uh, I believe it's a 85 watt, maybe 100, somewhere in that range. And this uh, keeps the uh, start battery uh, charged on sunny days. So, it's a little bit of an insurance policy, I guess. Over here, uh, underneath, there's a uh, ARB recovery point. And that is a place where you can hook up and pull people out of the ditch if necessary. A lot of recovery points uh, are on the bumper themselves. This one, um, is interesting because it connects directly to the frame and so there's no there's no middleman when you're pulling someone out so you can hook that hook up to a vehicle and probably pull a uh, fully loaded dump truck out of the ditch with that here we have the uh the tires these are the uh, nitto trail grapplers uh, these are mud terrain tires i wanted uh previously to these tires i had um, the uh, bf goodrich ko2s but I, I swapped them out uh, recently when uh, I upgraded the wheels and the tires. I wanted something. These are 33 inch tall tires. And the, uh, the previous size was the, uh, the stock size of, I think, 31 and a half. The wheels are the, um, the uh, Icon Rebound Pros. Uh, these have a, um, these are kind of like a halfway point to a full beadlock uh, wheels. You've got these little studs that uh, go around the uh, the rim of the uh, wheel, and they actually stick into the into the uh, the cavity of the uh, of the tire, and uh, the they do a good job of holding the tire on, especially when you uh, air down. You can probably air down to uh, around 10 psi with these, and uh, still feel uh, confident that uh, you won't uh, lose your bead. Inside, we have uh, upgraded upper control arms. These are the SPC upper control arms. The, uh, the nice thing about the SPCs is they have a, a tremendous amount of uh, adjustment, more so than uh, I think maybe any other on the market right now. And uh, 
holding up the truck. Uh, the the uh, we have the ARB uh, BP51 suspension. The nice thing about the uh, the BP51s is it allows the driver to uh, uh, adjust the uh, compression and the rebound of the uh, of the shocks. Did a cab mount shop uh, just to make uh, make sure of any wheel any tire clearance. Starting from the top, we got a little Overland bound plaque. A lot of people I know out there are members. I'm uh, 18469. And on top of the truck we have a uh, front runner rack. This is the Slimline 2. And uh, it's uh, holding up an ARB awning. Uh, just your standard awning, not, not too 70 degree awning. We've got uh, rock sliders. These are uh, rock sliders by Cruising Off Road. And uh, I don't think he's in business anymore. <laughs> but uh, he's, a, he's a good guy. His name's Jason. He built these himself. These are um, the type of steel is called DOM, drawn over mandrel. Bolted on in five different places. He used uh, three factory holes in the, in the bumper or in the frame. And then he drilled two for five, five points of uh, contact. Up here we have a cell phone booster. Uh, this is a, uh, a Wii Boost cell phone booster. It uh, it goes up and um, it's on a front runner mount, so it's pretty easy to bring down. Say if you're in a lot of uh, heavy vegetation, you don't want it knocked off. Just locks in place like that. Up here, moving on to the back of the truck, uh, we have some uh, ARB Quick Connects for the uh, the air. Um, a lot of people have a, uh, a compressor under the hood, uh, so what you do is you pop your hood and you, you plug in your airline, but I'm lazy, so I prefer to have these on the outside, and we've got one here and one on the outside. Easy to connect your airline, and onto your tire you go. We have a uh, hard shell camper. This is the iCamper 2 Mini. I bought used from, a, uh, from another local YouTuber who shall remain nameless at this time. Uh, we have a front runner bed rack. Uh, it's good. It still allows uh, allows a person to uh, to reach in and grab stuff. Got some uh, quick fist uh, mounting uh, points here. I did have my shovel here, but since I put this uh, this uh, tent on, I have to put the shovel on the inside. And let's see, that's about it. Oh yeah, we got uh, hard to tell from here, but uh, I got a little picture of. Uh, Greta, and she's not happy whenever I fuel up the uh, the gas. But <laughs> there she is to remind me to go electric. All right, so I'm moving to the back of the vehicle. Um, we've got a, uh, a D shackle here. This is your three quarter inch uh, D shackle. It's uh, it's a Smitty built, and so it just stays there all the time. If it gets stolen, hard to tell. But um, we've got a, uh, a front runner steel table. It's steel and aluminum. And um, it's a little expensive, but it does have the virtue of being very slim and uh, it hides out of the way. So when you go to camp, you just pull it out, set it up, and then uh, it has its own little sliding area and it's out of the way. Uh, here we have a crazy beaver shovel. It's uh, got little points here, so a weapon of last resort in case uh, uh, Yogi Bear comes into your camp. <laughs> And uh, let's see what else. And we have an ARB Elements fridge. Uh, this fridge is the only one, maybe uh, one or two on the market that is uh, you can expose to the elements. So because we have an open air bed, uh, I need something that can withstand the water. And if this locks in place, there's a fridge slide here, uh, specific to the ARB Elements. And uh, let's pop the fridge open, grab a Coke or any adult beverage. And right now we have the temperature set to two degrees Celsius. So these are really handy, even when you're not camping, because uh, what you can do is uh, you can load it up with uh, cold drinks and you know, you don't have to stop at a gas station or 
or anywhere and you know instead of uh, three or four dollars for a drink you go to Costco and you spend 50 cents on a, on a can of pop and uh, say if you're going grocery shopping you know you want to buy a few cold items and uh, you can pop them in your fridge and uh, you don't have to go home right away so there's that and in the back uh, with the fridge out in the back we have an alu box uh, it's a waterproof box and I uh, put a bunch of odds and ends in there It'll ratchet straps or uh, also have my um, my uh, tire repair kit in there and uh, also in the back it's a little bit messy in the back we have a five pound propane tank uh, we're moving to a five pound propane tank uh, because we, we've been using the little Coleman one pounders and those are kind of wasteful so when those run out we're going to switch over to our five pound and uh, here we have uh, this little thing here this is a uh, toilet Thunderbox from Australia and uh, it's uh, this thing folds up and uh, it folds up out of the way when, when not in use and uh, it's handy so there's that and there we have a, uh, a Ryobi uh, electric chainsaw um, and it comes in with its own case and uh, we keep it uh, just in case we uh, we go out on a trail and we're camping one night and say if there's a windstorm and a tree comes down uh, we have a chainsaw that we can chop it up into little pieces and get underway uh, so that's that oh yeah and I got this little handy puller this is used for uh, pulling stuff at the back of the truck. All right, uh, not much to see on this side. Um, we've got, uh, it's hard to see right now, but we've got uh, uh, ARB um, uh, Old Man Emu uh, leaf springs. This is the, uh, the heavy duty uh, leaf springs. I think we might've added a leaf in here, I'm not sure. But uh, my installer suggested that we go with the heavy duty leafs because of all the, the weight and the junk we carry in the back. Let's see, we've got uh, some recovery boards here, uh, Max Trax brand. Uh, we just got the uh, the regular Max Trax, not the extreme. Maybe one day we'll upgrade, but for now, these are these will do. And uh, got them locked down here with a uh, steel cable. I don't know if, uh, if that'll be enough to uh, to deter a determined thief, but uh, that's that. Up here, we have. This is a, a product by Alucab, it's called the Alucab Shower Cube. And uh, what it does is, um, it's basically a little privacy enclosure. So it comes out to about here, and uh, basically it's like a little little tent thing. It comes down and uh, gives you privacy for whatever you want to do inside. Uh, you want to put your toilet here, uh, if you want to put a can of water with a spray nozzle up there, you have a shower, change your clothes. Whatever, whatever you want to do that you don't want other people to see. Uh, upstairs we have a front runner uh, jerry can holder. This holds two jerry cans. And uh, today uh, we're using uh, Wavian cans. Uh, those are the ones that fit in the jerry can holder. We've got a lot of stuff on the inside here too. We've got uh, some Carhartt seat covers uh, to try and protect the, uh, the fabric. Uh, these have been really sturdy. I got these in uh, and uh, what looks like cement gray too and uh, floor mats we've got some weather tech floor mats those have been good that uh, does a good job of uh, keeping all the junk off the floor and everything the bottom we've got a um, that is the uh, uh, Kenwood ham radio and up top we have the, uh, the Kenwood uh, head unit for the ham radio so we can BS with other people on the trail uh, let's see, in the middle we've got a, the whole 67 Designs uh, rail, it's called the Taco Rail and it holds all your little accessories. In the middle there that's my cell phone holder. Uh, let's see, the third is the uh, Garmin GPS. I got that primarily uh, so family uh, can track us when we're off grid and uh, also send an SOS signal in case things really go hairy. And then at the very end, uh, there is the ARB Lynx system. It's, um, think of it as kind of like an S-Pod type thing. It allows you to control vehicle accessories. Uh, in this case, we've got, uh, we've got uh, the uh, tire pressure control module. So what I do 
is uh, when I want to air up my tires, I just input the value of the, uh, the PSI that I want and uh, connect the airline and uh, the tires go up to the, uh, to the target pressure and you don't have to do any thinking. Uh, down below is a, um, is a Kenwood two-way radio. That's to call your miles on the uh, logging roads. We've got uh, some recovery gear. I like to keep that handy. Uh, we've got some uh, Milwaukee toolboxes. And here we keep um, spare parts. Uh, we've got three days worth of clothes. We've got some food and uh, anything. Uh, whenever we want to go camping, uh, we've got basically everything that we need uh, to go. And we just go and everything's all ready and packed up. Uh, we've got a, a little bag here. This is from Blue Ridge Overland. And inside we keep um, keep all our air, air up and air down tools. Um, the gauges and uh, deflators and stuff like that. Here we've got a uh, little fire extinguisher. Uh, this is a single use uh, fire extinguisher, but it does have the virtue of lasting 10 times as long as a regular fire extinguisher. So uh, it's a little expensive, but uh, might save your truck one day. Uh, also, there's a regular fire extinguisher. Got a uh, Goal Zero uh, portable lithium battery. Uh, just temporary, of course. Uh, in August, I'm uh, getting a uh, full Red Arc uh, uh, auxiliary battery system, and uh, with the uh, all the uh, components. But that'll do for the time being. Up here, we have the uh, another product by Blue Ridge Overland. It's the uh, it's the uh, Blue Ridge Attic for the Tacoma. Allows you to put some a uh, few little light items like a, a jacket or a safety vest up there, blanket. Underneath here we have um, you probably noticed that there's no rear seats in the truck. So I took those out and uh, had uh, these uh, Goose Gear. Uh, this is the Goose Gear full rear seat delete kit, kindly installed by uh, Epic Adventure Outfitters in Port Kells. Uh, they did a super job and uh, gives us a lot more space. Well, yeah, you can't have passengers, but uh, haul more gear. <laughs> awesome rig, Raymond. Um, basically, I've, I've known Raymond, I think, yeah, like, just going back to the uh, thing that we talked about, I've known Raymond since, like, uh, one comment that he had on one of my videos. I guess it's because his wife is Filipino, and I'm Filipino as well, too, so I uh, heard me talking, um, you know, Tagalog, and... <laughs> <laughs> kind of noticed that right so uh, yeah uh raymond's actually uh been one of them like like a subscriber of mine for for a while yeah one of your top supporters i, I know exactly <laughs> it is it's true though so that's why we went out on a tri uh, trip today actually i'm pretty sure this the trip already went out prior to us filming the, the rig walk around uh but before we end the video uh i've done this a few times already on uh, a couple of rig walk arounds already um any future modifications of for the uh, rig here yeah we've got uh, we've done a lot so far but there's more to go uh, i need some lights um one thing at a time lights is always good are you planning to also put like ditch lights as well or just uh, keep it ditch lights at some point in the future okay i don't know exactly when but uh it's lower on the priority yeah, list yeah, yeah. but eventually they'll come and uh, I, that one thing i learned for for me personally like uh i like especially since you and your wife sometimes i've seen some of your pictures you and your wife go by yourself on a lot of trips mm -hmm. hitting the trail sometimes at like a nighttime lights is very important that's the one thing i've learned so far by just going because there's that one time actually this is just a behind the scenes kind of thing there's that one time actually i went camping decided i'm like ah, i didn't set up i didn't set up my my camp for today right ended up going home at like 12 midnight and it was dark oh no and thank goodness i have like good lighting on my jeep uh -huh. and yeah saved my butt there's uh there's room up there for a uh a light bar up there one time i'm thinking about a, a rigid light bar yeah there's one there's one model that um depending on your speed will adjust the focus mm. so when you're going slow yeah it's a uh, wide angle yeah. but the, when you increase speed it, it slowly goes for distance okay so I, i'm sure that's going to come with a hefty price tag though uh, are you thinking like maybe just a 40 inch like light bar i guess or yeah. from like rigid nice. yeah something yeah. like that yeah one day you never know hey that's honestly for me as long as uh, for me ditch lights 
uh, really is just pretty much the best one or even just the ones in the front as well too so yeah I think I think honestly those are a good modification ever thought of like doing I know you got the eye camper but ever thought of doing like you know a lot of people are doing the, the canopies and the owl cabs and stuff like that uh, well the wife and I would really love one of those yeah but we yeah. live in a condo ah so gotcha. we're high yeah. limited yeah 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 now we could get one of those yeah. camper canopy type things yeah but then we'd have to park on the street yeah and where I live we've got um, how shall I say vagrants that wander <laughs> the neighborhood at night yeah and uh, I'm just afraid that they're gonna come in one night with a pry bar and just want to see what's inside <sighs> yeah and uh, help themselves to my stuff yeah. and uh, uh, so for now we've got the uh, the bedrock with the tent and and for the foreseeable future yeah that's what we're gonna stay with I, I, th I think it's always safety is first but but for some people a safety second right so uh, <laughs> but anyways um wait so next question i think it's just a appropriate favorite trip since you've started doing overlanding off-roading uh, the favorite most favorite trip I, i've done so far uh has been with um we did a, a trip to, to cornwall fire tower oh yeah and uh did that with side note i have not yet been there yet because <laughs> i've been meaning to do some of the fire towers just Every time I try to go, it's just either there's still st st uh, still snow, or there's been you know like you know forest fires happening, yeah. right? So anyway, sorry for interrupting. That's okay. You. Yeah, we w visited uh, Cornwall Fire Tower, uh, courtesy of Overland Training Canada and uh, Fab from West Coast Off Roaders. Yeah, Fab's awesome. And uh, we went up there and we did uh, we did a whole bunch of training, off road training, and uh, bonus got to see Sean Walford from the Story Till Now and Teddy from <laughs> Unwinding Roads. Oh yeah, I remember and that episode. We I all, we all met up there together yeah. and yeah. it was a great. And um, after we left the, uh, the tower, we did some more exploration. We went to uh, French Mine. Oh God, nice, I heard about yeah, that place. We did, yeah. we did that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we did the Grand Tour mm -hmm. and uh, it was a blast. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, um, I think that's pretty much it. Do you, do you wanna do you wanna say anything else to uh, the audience? No, that's that's about it. Uh, it's uh, just a truck that me and my wife uh, got, and uh, we go out exploring uh, BC's back roads. And uh, now with uh, the borders opened up, we're probably gonna head south and uh, go exploring down in Washington State and beyond. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that. Uh, that'll do it for this video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Raymond, thanks for sharing your rig with us. Um, yeah, that'll do it for the video. If you guys liked the video, um, Raymond, I'm pretty sure you already know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. Exactly. <laughs> All right guys, stay awesome. All right. Awesome. Hey guys, I got two videos for you guys to check out. If you guys are enjoying the content, more rig walk around episodes are coming up for you guys. Also another trip video. But anyways, guys, I'll see you guys next time.